All right, this is a cool one. Today we are camping in Moab, Utah, and today we have the Yeti SB135 lunch ride. This replaces the outgoing 27.5 bike. And at first I thought Yeti made a mistake launching a full 27.5 bike in 2023. And now we're gonna spend the rest of this video making me look like a dummy because I was very wrong, Yeti was very right, and I'm having to eat my words and I don't like that. Anyway, let's go ride bike. All right, let's talk for a minute about why I thought Yeti had screwed up. I'm a pretty tall guy and I almost always ride an extra large frame. I've generally had a couple of issues in the past when I ride short to mid travel 25 inch bikes. I feel that they can get a little bit slow and stuttery in rough terrain. I've felt that 27 five inch front wheels can tend to get stuffed into rocks and holes and compressions and ledges leading to some uncomfortable moments. Okay, so let's talk for a little bit about how the SB135 defies all of my past experience on 27 and a half inch wheel bikes. First of all, this thing doesn't feel slow. It doesn't feel stuttery. It doesn't get hung up and it doesn't make me wish I was on a 29 the whole time, even if these proportions look a little comical. And honestly, that blew my mind a little bit, especially considering where I was riding, where I thought a big 29er would be the move. But I started thinking about it more 27.5 maybe won't be a big disadvantage in Moab because there isn't a lot of momentum to be robbed in the first place. Those trails are a little slower, a little tighter, and a little more technical. So you're having to dive and dodge and weave in and out of obstacles or unweight and go over them. So you're not necessarily just plowing through everything where these big wheels would have a benefit. So now let's take a deep dive into how the SB135 rides. Moab is a technical climber's daydream. There are very few smooth sections of uphill trail. In fact, most of the time you find yourself redlining as you step up ledge after ledge and throw in some sand covered rocks, some turns that are too tight, and that's Moab for you. And it's, it's a very challenging, difficult place to ride a bike uphill until you have an SB135. I am completely blown away at the climbing ability on this thing. It has incredible traction, great agility, and a pretty good pedal platform to get you up some of the toughest climbs around. And I think it comes down to a couple of things. And let's start with the wheel size. Every time I ride a bike with a 27 and a half inch rear wheel, I'm impressed by how quickly it accelerates, especially compared to bigger 29 inch wheels. That smaller wheel spins up quicker and easier. And that becomes very apparent on the steep climbs where a bigger wheel is hard to just keep it spinning. The SB135 motors up the steepest bits of trail without much fuss at all. The SB135 suspension platform contributes to that quick acceleration feel as well. Just like the new SB140, it remains a little bit more active. So you have really good traction and a little bit more comfortable ride quality. All that acceleration in the world does you no good without traction. Otherwise, you're just spinning and leaving skid marks on all the rocks. SB135 has a very similar suspension curve to the new SB140. And if you haven't been following along, that bike generates a ton of traction. SB135 keeps that rear wheel stuck to the ground, even while standing and putting down maximum effort. In fact, Brock and I couldn't stop talking about how little we were sliding out. There was a climb in particular that we both couldn't believe, and it was a pretty steep ramp with a five inch root running through the middle of it. And you had to stand up to get the power to get up this thing. And standing up, being over the front of the bike, hitting that root and not sliding out where we both should have was pretty impressive. And lastly, the SB135 has excellent handling characteristics. The geometry is well balanced for a bike that needs to go uphill and descend well. The angles are neither too steep nor too slack for an all mountain bike. That geometry paired with small wheels keeps the handling very quick and sharp. I struggle with certain sections on the Captain Ahab trail on bigger 29 inch wheels, where it just makes the bike too long and too big and too cumbersome. I'd imagine the SB135's overall shorter wheelbase really helped me on that trail in those tighter sections. Although there was one place I didn't love it as much. And Moab has a lot of really quick downs to ups that are about 
the length of a bike wheel or just a little bit bigger. And I did notice on the smaller wheels that the front wheel wanted to stay in those parking spots, sending me out the front door, where a 29er makes that transition just a little bit smoother. Overall, the SB135 is a heck of a climber. It does not cease to impress, especially when the trails get technical and difficult. Right, so this is where I really start to look like a dummy. The SP-135 is so radically different from what I ever could have imagined it would be. And I guess that's why you never judge a book by its cover. This bike is fun, lively, jibby, stable, and rather confident. And a couple of those things I did not expect out of it. I started out the trip a little bit hesitant to really push the 135 in the rough terrain. I've had some bad experiences on short travel 27.5 bikes in Moab where the front wheel found a parking spot and I went out the front door into a pile of rocks. And that is a history I did not want to repeat. But as I started riding the bike more and more, I was putting more and more trust into it, especially in those sections, and it never let me down. We did not repeat my lousy history. By the end of the trip, I found myself pre-hopping into stupid rocky ramps or pumping terrain that probably shouldn't be pumped. And to my surprise, the 135 never felt like it got hung up in that kind of stuff. I never felt like the front wheel stopped and stuttered, pushing my weight forward over the bars. And I'm not totally sure why that's the case. If it's the pretty slack 65 degree head tube angle, if it's the bigger, stiffer, burlier Fox 36 fork, whatever it is, the bike just doesn't get hung up. It remains very stable for a small 27.5. I think another part of that could be the chainstays are a little bit longer than 27.5 chainstays I've ridden in the past. That could contribute to an overall just better body position on the bike and a more stable ride quality. Whatever it was, this ended up being probably the most stable 27 and a half inch wheel bike I've ever ridden. And it was never an excuse to back down from a feature or to not ride the bike how I wanted. And it does all of that without giving up the fun factor that 27.5 is famous for. I think it's the culmination of a lot of things, uh, especially the balanced geometry and the dialed suspension. Like the new SB140, it's a bit more active than the Yetis of the past. It gives the bike a bit more comfortable ride quality to it and a bit more lively and fun character. SB135 likes to jump, hop, unweight its way down the trail. It's the kind of bike that changes your mentality of how you ride and how you see the trail. Instead of just going as fast as possible as you try to smash through every rock in sight, it unlocks a more creative and fun riding style. I found myself jumping off of every rise in sight, taking silly, stupid inside lines, and hitting corners with a bit more pace than usual. Speaking of the corners, the SB135 challenges the new Santa Cruz 5010 for the best cornerer award. I'd have to argue that the 135 is significantly more agile than the 5010, but it does give up a certain degree of front wheel stability compared to the MX setup. A 29 inch front wheel seems to just track a line a little bit better through a corner without requiring so many micro adjustments. That said, the 135 corners with the best of them. It has enough traction to let you corner confidently, and it's agile enough for the tightest corners. With my riding style, I found it a little easy to get too much weight over the front wheel, leading to that back end feeling a little bit light and washy. It took me all of 15, 20 minutes to adjust my body position and get weight applied to both of those wheels evenly. Once I corrected for the shorter front center than what I'm used to, it was off to the races. So my favorite part about the SB135 is how comfortable it felt on a wide variety of trails. It was happy enough flowing through our warm-up laps on Navajo Rocks, it was great for our shuttle day on MAG-7, and it handled Captain Ahab, which is a little bit rougher and more difficult, without any problems at all. It's truly that bike that's happy to go anywhere and to do anything. All in all, on the downhills, I'm happy to be proven wrong, I guess, that all of my preconceived notions about what a 27 and a half inch wheel bike is capable of were possibly not correct. This bike gives you the stability without losing any of the fun factor. So I, I, I hate to say it, but I stand a little bit less defiantly in my 29 or die attitude. And listen, I'm a tall guy. I'm six feet two, I ride extra large frames. I'm very happy on a 29er for the most part. I personally don't feel the negative effects of those wheels. Brock, who's shorter than me, he's not a tall guy, generally rides a medium frame. I think he's probably 5'8". He does feel those negative effects of a 29er, so his feedback on this bike is going to be very, very important. So we're going to listen to a little bit of what Brock has to say about 
SB135. And please, no short jokes, he's a little bit sensitive. Ah, <laughs> not my nipple, you got my <laughs> skin for sure. Ah. Okay, so when this bike first showed up, I didn't even know I was getting one. Um, don't know anything about it. Was really excited to get a full 27.5 bike. By default, I'm a 27.5 fan. I enjoy them, I ride them a little bit different. Me being a shorter rider at 5'8", it feels really natural to ride a 27.5. Um, so it was it was really exciting to unbox this. And I have this kind of mental preconceived notion that a 27.5 wheel, especially in the front, gets stuffed into holes and stuff. I call them parking spots, where the bike will just stop and over the bars you go. So with that kind of in my mind, the first ride that we did, I was a little hesitant because of that. Um, and I think both Connor and I felt right off the bat that that was not the case. In fact, five minutes into the ride, kind of forgot this was 27.5. That feeling of going over the bars went away. And we, we really, really, I really enjoyed this bike. It corners extremely well. It's playful, which is what is fun about a 27.5 bike. And also a 135 rear travel bike, in my book, should be a fun, playful bike. One thing that really stood out about this bike, though, was it's traction going up these kind of sandy off camber rock slabs so it's really impressive to see that i just had a good time on this bike it's it's playful it maneuvers really well it's confident i think this is very high up on my list of next bikes that i could purchase there's a part of me that was going man i really wish that was mullet that is on the next ride hopefully will be i'll be riding it set up mullet um, but i i wouldn't hesitate to ride this bike full 27.5 i think it does awesome all right, let's get into a couple of comparisons here. It's not every day I compare two different bikes with different wheel sizes, but that's exactly what we have right now. We've got the SB135 and the Santa Cruz 5010. They both fill that fun, playful, lively trail to what I'd argue all mountain bike category. As I touched on a little bit earlier, the SB135 is the more agile of the two bikes where the 5010 is a little bit more stable and a little bit more confident when things get steep and rough. It's not a difficult call. I'd have to give the climbing win to the SB135, both in technical terrain and smooth, faster terrain. For steep and rough downhill riding, I'd probably grab the 5010. It's marginally slacker, significantly longer, and it has a taller front end, all which help in steep, difficult terrain. To be honest, I'm pretty torn between these two bikes. I like them both a lot, but I couldn't tell you which one I like more. They both offer some pros and cons, but luckily I have both in my possession. So you can bet we're gonna see a showdown here. Now let's talk about the SB135 versus the new SB140, not the old 27 and a half inch wheel one. I never had a chance to ride that, so I can't speak to how those two compare. Both the 135 and the 140 fill a very similar category. They are well-rounded, all mountain to trail bikes that kind of are happy to go anywhere and do anything. The biggest difference is going to be in that wheel size because apart from the wheel size, they have a very similar suspension curve. They have very similar geometry and intended applications. While they're both great climbers, I would say the 135 gets the win in technical terrain, while the 140 is a little bit quicker on wide open trails and fast fire roads. And this is weird, especially coming from me. On the descents, I can't help but say I had more fun on the 135 than I did the 140. And that makes sense because by nature, it's going to be a little bit more fun and playful and lively. It's just weird for me to say that because I really like the way a 29er rides. It suits my riding style very well. So what I'm trying to say here is I think it comes down to your trails, your riding style, and your priorities. If you want fast, put your heels down and plow through things, the 140 is gonna do a bit better job of it. But if you want fun, unique, and different, the 135 is gonna be the better bike for you. All right, so who is the SB135 for? While I hate admitting I'm wrong about anything, here we are. I really, really liked the 135 and could see it as my one and only. It definitely has that jack of all trades feel without being a master of none. Certainly a master of climbing, cornering, jumping, pumping, mild plowing, and overall just having a good time. So if you've been a 29 or die kind of person like myself, I really recommend not riding off the 135. I'm very happy that I didn't. It's a tough bike to put into a neat, tidy little category. It's the fun, jibby little play bike, the everyday trail bike, the two-wheeled mountain goat, and the technical trail destroyer, all smushed into one sleek frame. So if you're the type of rider who wants, and I can't believe I'm using this word, 
a quiver killer, but you want something that's unique. You want something that's different. That's not the standard 140 mil 29er. You want something that's a little more fun and playful and lively. And I have to say the 135 could be the bike for you. So one line SB135 review, just to wrap this all up. Damn you Yeti, you're making me rethink everything I knew about mountain bikes and it's all the 135's fault. Thanks for sticking around, we'll see you next time.